God bless each heart tonight. And may we worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And y'all marry me in prayer. And uh, uh, I'd like for everybody to turn to Colossians 2.4. Colossians 2.4. Colossians 2, 4. <clears throat> and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And I'd like to make the name of my message tonight, Be Not Beguiled. Yes, and uh, I'm concerned for the future ministry of the church and for our country too. And uh, I think you'll know where I'm coming from tonight before I finish. And I pray I'll be welcome to share. And uh, spirit and truth as the Lord leads me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, King, King, and Lord, Lord, Savior, and Friend, Almighty God, we praise thy holy name. Lord, we just... Uh, uh, thank you for dying on the cross, shedding our precious blood, dying yes. in our place, saving our soul, washing us in the blood of the Lamb, foot, Holy Spirit, and word in our hearts, leading God all truth, Lord. And we just pray tonight for the future of the ministry of the church here in America and reaching souls in other countries yes. through uh, 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 missionaries and TV ministry and all this, Lord. And uh, Lord, protect the Christians and Jews and ministers around the world, Lord, and uh, Lord, we just uh, pray, lead and guide me tonight, Lord, uh, declare the word God and truth that you put on my heart to share, and may the brothers and sisters in Christ receive it with godly love, and uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, help us be better Christian, better prayer warrior, better witnesses, Lord, and uh, Lord, uh, pray for our country earnestly, and uh, Lord, uh, uh, lead God, Holy Spirit, if there's lost, backslid, whatever concern tonight, Lord, give them courage to pray through and know so salvation in Christ Jesus as well as we pray. Amen. 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 And uh, uh, we look at God's word tonight of uh, be not beguiled. Uh, we don't want to be misled, deceived uh, uh, by Satan and uh, people and so-called friends and the world and the ways of the world and TV and news media and all these things of the world, but we need to learn to lean on Jesus and seek truth. And we, as children of God, should hunger in prayer and read our Bibles and, and know the truth that nobody deceive or mislead us even in the word or the truth of the world of what's going on. And uh, it takes earnest uh, prayer and concern reading our Bibles and leaning on God for truth and guidance to live for him and witness for him and not be ashamed. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's read here some here in Colossians 2, 4, uh, on through uh, a few verses here. And... This I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joy and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit yeah. after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead, and you being dead 
in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh have he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The 18th verse here, let no man beguile you of your reward in the voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which ye have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Amen. And looking here at uh, uh, chapter 3, 1 and 2, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sat upon the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. Don't uh, be all wrapped up in your TV and sports and uh, golfing and uh, uh, hunting and fishing and everything. And uh, uh, I liked uh, this old uh, storytelling thing I heard many years ago in country music. Uh, this man got a telephone call from God and uh, uh, the Lord was asking him where he was Sunday and he said, well, I, I was out fishing and everything and you know, and, and he was bragging on the boat he had and everything like that and, and the Lord listened for a while and he said, well, that, that boat ain't going to do you no good in hell, you know. And we need to recognize where our hearts and minds are are they wrapped in our possessions and hobbies and uh, jobs? Do we love our jobs and our, our families and uh, belongings and uh, hunting and fishing and all these things more than we do God? It, is our heart on God? It, if we're praying, laying on Him, hungering and reading the Word and witnessing, uh, he'll, he'll meet your needs. and You don't have to uh, hunger for the richness of this world and making every dollar you can. The Lord knows your needs and He'll take care of you if you trust and lean on Him. Amen. And uh, uh, 12 uh, and 13 verses here chapter 3 uh, of Colossians. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness and humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and motion, one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, Sing them with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word of deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I want to take you to Genesis 3, as we're all familiar with. And the word beguile uh, is first used in the Bible here in Genesis 3, and uh, Genesis 3, and uh, we're going to read uh, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree of which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be God, as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her and did eat. And so later the Lord's come walking through the garden and uh, talking to him, and uh, and uh, and the Lord God in the third 
came first, said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, Thy serpent beguiled me and did eat. And uh, Satan, as he deceived and misled Adam and Eve, and, and, and the sin of not loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, they, they turned away from God and coveted after the tree, great salesmanship of Satan, and he's been using that on mankind ever since. And we got to be bold in the faith and stand on our toes and be strong and rebuke Satan every time he tempts our minds and bodies of going astray and uh, uh, away from God. And he's always covenanting your mind of thought for bigger possessions like your neighbor and everybody else has got. God knows your needs. And yeah. you got to learn to live by your wages and needs of life, and the Lord will take care of your needs. Amen? Amen. And, and, and it's part of common sense of the faith as well. Amen? And uh, uh, we want to look at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 11 as, uh, as we've looked at before and... Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 that we're all familiar with and read 1 through 4. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chastity virgin to Christ. But I fear least by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preach of another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. And and uh, but jumping over to the 13th through the 15th verses it is explaining that verse to the fullest uh, of being aware of Satan and his followers. For such are the false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And Satan has people in the churches and the ministry and teaching and thinking and missionary fields and all that, and uh, they're just living by mind and works, and they don't know God in their heart. And if God's children ain't praying and reading their Bibles and praying for truth, then they, they're following false teachers like that and preachers and being deceived and led astray and could lead them straight to hell, you know? Right. And, uh, and it, let, let's look at uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, as you're all familiar with, study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And we need to please pray daily, read your Bibles, and live and witness for God daily. Amen. And uh, uh, I, I want to look at uh, Matthew 13. Um, Doing a lot of jumping here, and I hope you can sort of put things together a little bit here uh, with me. And I want to start at the 11th verse, Matthew 13, 11. And uh, we're going to read through the uh, 17th verse. And uh, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. 
For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And if you ain't praying and reading your Bible and praying for uh, understanding of the Word of God, then it's going in one ear and out the other, and you ain't receiving nothing. Amen. Satan is robbing you, and uh, and fourteen verse and. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes that they have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see in your ears, for they hear, and uh, and for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And you know, uh, as I was bringing out, you got to be praying and reading your own Bible and uh, praying to receive. Uh, in church uh, uh, of sermons and teaching of Sunday school and, and even the messages in gospel songs and and what's so wrong so many people they, uh, as I call it they got uh, a clubhouse religion they come to the altar may own a conviction and everything and I tell them the devil will chase you right to the altar he'll try to talk you out of praying through and so many, I think, are getting up as lost as they got down because they didn't pray through. Or a lot of these clubhouse religious churches uh, got the wrong pastors to make sure things are carried out right. And, and as you hear of them speaking, they have them assign a card to join the church. And uh, uh, they ain't no repentance or prayer involved and uh, baptize them and all that. And, and people are by works and mind, they're just exercising works and volunteer for the ministry, teaching, deaconship, and all these things. And, uh, and you know, I believe we got a lot of people like that in the political arena of our government today. For uh, their, they, they claim they know God, but their hearts are far from them, as Matthew 15, 8 says, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And they're supposed to be making pledges on the Bible and everything, being prayed in for leadership of Congress and presidents and all these things. And uh, they don't even know God. They won't stand on the Word of God and the Constitution and Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights that was written up in the beginning with the our forefathers of our country, uh, they, they're not even wanting to back and defend the Constitution and everything. And uh, uh, just like uh, they pulled the prayer and ministry out of the schools and they okayed abortion and then homosexuality and then sex marriages and, and, and they just keep getting further and further from God they keep getting further and further from the Constitution and yeah. laws of the land, and that's the kind of administration we've ended up today with. And uh, uh, just uh, recognizing and uh, remembrance, as I shared before, where you, uh, Joe Biden, when he started out in the presidency, uh, he he said uh, capitalism ain't working for us. We need to switch over to socialism. But along with it, they're bringing in communism, Marxism. They're wanting dictatorship. They, that's why they're pouring in all these heathens and numbers across southern borders. And they're coming in the north, and they're flying in from everywhere. They say they're cutting the numbers down, but what people ain't hearing, too, they're even flying them in. Yeah. 
no inspection or check whatsoever, and they're spending the treasury money uh, on immigrants and first on room and board and insurance and everything, and uh, they're selling our country out uh, that way, and they're selling us out to China. China's buying up our land and yeah. companies. They're influencing our schools and uh, colleges, the military, the news media, the CIA, the FBI. China's going to take over without firing a shot the way things go. And uh, they're just bowing to China, and they have no love and honor for God whatsoever. And I ain't going to defend Mitch McConnell, Mitt Romney. Mitch McConnell uh, is married to a woman, and his family owns uh, all the shipping from China here back and forth with trade and everything. And as Trump would like to get in as president as before, he raised tariffs on these countries to help trade and manufacture our own products here in America. And uh, Mitch McConnell's against them tariffs because he knows it's going to decrease his business of money, shipping and everything. And they're all guilty of selling our country out for the love of money. And they have no love for our freedom of Christianity and freedom from communism, socialism, Marxism, all that God is the love of money on their minds. They don't even have no love for their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and the future of our country. And here it is, school teachers are brainwashing the kids and all this uh, other stuff. And uh, their license ought to be taken away and put in prison. Abortion doctor's license took away and put in prison. And... Uh, 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 I mean, it's heartbreaking. It really is. They say uh, by survey, 50% of the Christians ain't even voting. And what, what's so heartbreaking? People go to church. They, they join church. They, uh, they're involved in Sunday school and church and all that. And all these denominations claiming to be of the kingdom of God, born-again believers, and, and nobody cares about anybody else outside the church doors to witness to them and win them to Christ and get them in church to get saved and everything. And, uh, and yet our soldiers are going fighting for our freedom and the freedom of other countries and, and people there for, so they can have some Christian freedom and coming back looking like robots and our Congress don't, ain't even got the backbone to stand up to this ungodly administration and impeach them and step them down and, and correct everything. And uh, you take Donald J. Trump, y'all may not agree with him, but uh, he ain't perfect. But I think God's hands on that man. As God calls people for the ministry and pastorship and missionary field and uh, so forth, deacons and teachers, I think even in the political arena, as kings were called through the Bible and everything, like King David and all, uh, I think God's hands on him because God set up this country in the beginning with the forefathers we read about in the Constitution and writing it all after the Word of God. And Trump, he is for defending our Constitution, laws of our land, and defending the uh, uh, Christian freedom, and uh, uh, we need to pray for him, uh, uh, and that the hand of God will be with him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and protection of his family and all to win the presidency and correct this mess by the hand of God. He needs our prayers very, very much. Uh, and uh, I tell you, the Democrat Party has hurt our country terribly, and yet the Republican Party, when they're in, they ain't got the backbone when they do have majority to correct the wrongdoing that the Democrats done. They're all guilty, and we need prayer. We, we, we need prayer uh, of leadership to replace the bad and correct our political arena of Congress and presidents and all this stuff to save our nation for freedom of worship and freedom from communism, socialism, Marxism, 
so that you have freedom to witness for the Lord Amen. to your neighbor and families and on the job and uh, uh, around the world, back to missionaries and everything. But if this communism, socialism, Marxism comes in here, look out, your freedom will be taken away. They'll be burning the churches, arresting the Christians and the Jews like they are in other countries. Our freedom is at stake and it's very serious and we got to pray earnestly that God will change hearts and minds of the Democrat Party, liberals, independents, and Muslims, Arabs, whoever's here in America to vote Republican and for Donald Trump and all the Republican offices that are running to get our country back on track. Really, the Democrats back in this leadership today to uh, get dictatorship and communism and all that, to me, is treason and traitorism to our Constitution flag, Christian freedom. The Democrat Party ought to be annulled for such wrongdoing. And you might have been a Democrat in the past, but I pray that your eyes are open to what's going on, and it's time to vote for a party of leadership that uh, overthrow this mess and try to get us back on the right road for the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and freedom Amen. of uh, witnessing and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ and reaching the world for Christ, or that freedom can end real quick. We can be in bondage and slavery real quick, and uh, it's serious business. Uh, I like uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 11, and talking about all these things and getting involved in the world and independently living just for ourselves and not concerned for others. And uh, we, if we pray for others instead of ourselves more so, God will answer our prayers, I keep saying. Amen? And uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And we, we need to recognize all this sports and everything and uh, uh, TV, movies and everything of violence and uh, shootings and killings uh, ain't necessary. Uh, we can have more time reading our Bibles and talking with our families and kids and grow closer together in Christ Jesus and even have freedom uh, uh, knocking on doors and witnessing the neighbors and trying to get people to church. And uh, 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 the devil, with the pleasures of this world, is robbing Christians blindly to doing the ministry of God and, and the work he has for us. And we're being deceived. We're being beguiled uh, by the ways of the world. And we need to wake up seriously uh, uh, I want to look at Proverbs 2, 1 to 12. Proverbs 2, 1 to 12. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understand, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understand, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understand. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path, when wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul. Distraction shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the... Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll stop there. And uh, also looking at chapter 3. One and two, note this, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace 
shall they add to thee. Amen. Amen. The Lord will bless you if you will lean on him and obey uh, his word of God commandments of right and wrong. And how are you going to know right from wrong if you don't uh, read your Bibles and pray and lean on God? And I like the uh, way it's uh, briefed of, uh, and explained of the word Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. And a lot of people don't know them because they never touch them. It, it just lays on a table dusty and they may pick it up to carry to church, say they had a Bible. They won't even open it up for study or preaching, carry it back home, lay it back on the table. and They ain't growing because they're living independent for old self and the pleasure of its life. And all they're thinking about is tomorrow, what I'm going to do tomorrow or whatever I do when I get back home. And God help us all, amen. amen. And uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 3, 1 through 8. And Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. Time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And I tell people, it's time, there's a time to vote too. Right. And, and voice your opinion. And uh, you can, may not be able to go to the front lines and fight for your country or somebody else's freedom, but sh is it so big a task or job just to go and vote? Absolutely. And that's the least we can do. Right. And it's between life and death and our future, the church and our country's freedom from communism, socialism, Marxism, right. and everybody should voice their vote yes. and try to save our nation while we got a chance. Because if they pick up this dictatorship, there ain't gonna be no election in the future. They'll be run by the dictatorship where you win, uh, they'll, They'll say the other side wanted to stay in dictatorship. It's going on Venezuela, Russia, and China, all of them. You can't trust them. And uh, uh, God help us all, amen? amen. And uh, And, you know, there's so much to pray for. We need to Pray for our own children, relatives, yeah, yeah. our neighbors, and people of all trades of life, our military of all branches, women and men, doctors, nurses, dentists, farmers, ambulance workers, policemen, state troopers, SWAT team, barbers, uh, and uh, uh, people of all trades of life, the starving, hungry, homeless, those without food, clothing, shelter, and water, and uh, uh, divorces, and uh, Blind, paralyzed, limbless, deformed, diseases, and ailments of all kinds, the starving, the hungry of other nations, and their freedom of uh, worship and to know Jesus. And uh, uh, there, there's so much to pray for. And uh, uh, what, there's nothing wrong with praying for Ukraine's freedom from Russia and Taiwan from China and South Korea from. North Korea, we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray yeah, for the geez. peace of Israel, protect them with holy angels, guard them the mighty hand of God, and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understand to whip Hamas and Lebanon and uh, Iran, and that the uh, allied nations will wake up and join hands with them because the, we can be next, you know? Our country's on the eve of destruction, and uh, uh, God help us, amen. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, I don't want to pass up these scriptures. I want to take you to John eight. 
John 8. John 8, 42 through 47. And Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Near came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye of your father the devil, and lust your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and bode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not, which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, hear of God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. And you take this administration that's in office now, Joe Biden, Harris, and all those. They've been lying from the start. They couldn't tell the truth if their life depended on it. And they've told every lie under heaven about Donald Trump. And people will believe a lie before they'll believe a truth. And they're ready to hang and crucify Donald Trump. And that man is innocent, trying to fight for our country and constitution, Christian freedom. And people can't see through these lies. And I don't know if you all agree with me or not, but that's the way I see it. And we better wake up and vote righteously and try to save our country. They could be a civil war at the end of this election. There's no telling what could come out. Are you ready to face it? Are you ready to stand for right? Are you ready to save our nation and constitution and Christian freedom if you got to pick up a gun and go to war like they did back in the early history when they had to fight for their independence from Britain and yeah. uh, so forth, and uh, yeah. even the Civil War of the South and the North. Well, uh, our country is so divided. Uh, it, you see the hate for Christians and Jews in it. It is Amen. terrible, terrible. Amen. And we we got to pray earnestly for our nation and the church is future and ministry to the world. Uh, it's on the eve of destruction and the coming of the Lord must be near. I don't know what the future is and the steps of what's going to happen next, but I just feel something is coming and we better be ready for it and praying that we'll have the faith to lean on God to go through it and know that he'll go with us through it. Amen. And uh, it, it's terrible. And uh, uh, God is love. God is truth. God is spirit. The Trinity of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19 through 20, and 1 John 5, 7. God's word is truth. Love, letter from God uh, is the word of God. Amen. And uh, Hebrews... Uh, Three, seven, uh, I love. Uh, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, the 15th verse, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. And, you know, we must be born again, as True. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3. Must be born of water and of spirit. Flash is flesh, and spirit is spirit. And, he said in the 14th verse, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. John uh, 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life. And uh, John 14.6, Jesus said, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. And John 6, 44, Jesus said, and no man can come to me unless the Father draws. Right. Showing the Trinity God power, working together, drawing you and convicting you. And he's going to convict you through the preaching of the word, teaching of the word, even gospel song. And Holy Spirit, presence of God and voice, and, and uh John 15, 16, Jesus said, You didn't choose me. I chose you. I'll ordain you to gain fruit. He, 
ordained every one of us as children of God to be witnesses for him and gain souls to the kingdom of God. And uh, we uh, water and we plant, but the Lord giveth the yeah. increase. Amen. But there's so-called preachers and things in these churches that ain't even called of God, leading them and everything, and they're trying to be God themselves, you know? They're trying to give the increase and declaring people saved when they ain't saved. And I say, like a lot of them enormous crowds, it really looks good, and uh, they'll come forward for salvation, and they'll have them to follow them in prayer, and uh, they'll declare them saved after saying that prayer over them. But how many really prayed through? How many were sincere and got saved? And yet they, they got in their hearts and minds, oh, this great famous preacher prayed over me. I, I know I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. And next thing you know, they ain't in church. They're out in the world. They're following their own independent ways and the pleasures of the world. And they got sold in their mind that his prayer saved them instead of recognizing it's their own sincere prayer between them and God. Yeah. And it's okay to pray, pray with people to give them an example of prayer which we should tell them and declare unto them, but tell them now it's time for you to pray your own sincere prayer between you and God. And I tell people all the time, my prayer ain't going to save you, but I'll pray that you got the faith to pray through. Now that's what counts, amen. And you share the scriptures of salvation like I shared just then. And you got to trust that they'll pray through and be saved, amen. And uh, um, I won't cover Acts uh, as I do many times in uh, uh, 2.38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 319, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he's going to be present, amen? You don't have to tell God after the service, Oh, so-and-so got saved today. If God wasn't there then they didn't get saved. Amen. God knows everything. You ain't pulling nothing over his eyes. Amen. And uh, Romans 10, uh, 9 through 11. Amen. God is good. He's the best friend you'll ever have in this life. And the more you lean on him and trust in him and share all decisions with him, you will never be sorry. Amen. Romans 10, 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For whosoever, the thirteenth verse, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. And I tell people, but that whosoever don't kick in till the present. Holy Spirit of God is drawing and convicting you, then you know God is real like Hebrews uh, uh, 6, I won't read to you, but I won't share uh, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and you're hearing the truth of God's word preached and read, but you, you can feel the presence of God and his voice declaring truth unto you, drawing and convicting you, amen, and uh, Hebrews uh, 11, 6. I love it because really it's my sermon verse uh, that covers how I got saved uh, without a shadow of doubt. Uh, 11, 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the Lord just made himself present to me and I heard his voice that I needed him. I got under such conviction I didn't know how to act till I did go to the altar and get saved. And I knew he was real without a shadow of God. Now, and you know you pray to him and ask him to save you so when you know he's real without a shadow of doubt. 
and uh, God is so good. Amen. Amen. God is so good. And let's go, Lord, in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord.